be here and um, this is the facelifted Isuzu Mu X okay and you can immediately see that they have updated the front the headlamps now you have nice daytime running lights projector headlamps and the chrome grille you have uh, the different bumpers new color schemes a new interior finishing and some new wheels okay it remains as what it is a leather frame full off-road capable family car and that's what it has always been that's what it will always will be uh, it is based of course on the D-Max okay using the same drivetrain the same engine the same uh, transmission and all that it is not a particularly offensive looking car it is not a particularly aggressive looking car it is a a decent looking updated family go anywhere do anything family uh, SUV should I call it an SUV I mean it, it should be a proper SUV actually because uh, seven seats lots of space uh, you can store the tonneau cover down here you have some storage space there's a bit of a load lip here because they want to make the seats flat if you fold the seats and if they don't have this to store the tonneau cover and serve as a hidden storage space you will have a weird kink which will make it even harder for you to load your things and then uh, if you if you yeah i mean it's a bit of a kink so you lost about two two and a half inch to three inch of height in terms of room but you get a flat loading floor which is more important in my opinion and because it's a, it's a big car so you still have that so they, they really updated the interior they have um, you go to the showroom and touch the plastics that they use it's what I call high quality hard plastics okay they're hard but they're not a scruffy type okay it's nice to the touch you touch this and then you go and touch those in uh, the X-Trail or you know the uh, Nissan uh, well, Nissan X-Trail and the Mitsubishi Outlander it is of a higher grade plastic all right uh, all-round airbags as you can see right and then over there in the uh, B pillar right and then the front as well all right so you have all-round airbags it is a tough car it is uh, go anywhere do anything like, like what I mentioned and it is a car that you can do rough stuff with it because you just look at the approach angle okay uh, these are not so extreme off-road tires but if, if you fitted them with it you may do so okay highly customizable you can modify the car and all that it has keyless entry okay and the interior has been thoroughly updated I'm gonna go in and have a look um, powered seats nice uh, leather stitch seats and I like the fact that they use the ooh, big mosquito thicker leathers. It's not the you know those yeah some those high quality Napa leathers are really smooth right, but they are also rather thin. Ooh, this mosquito is well fed. Crap. Anyway, yeah, that's what I get when I got here. Anyway, let's look inside here. Uh, no surprises. Decent looking. Uh, speedos I mean they redesigned it right it, it, it looks all right with a color screen in the middle you have some nice touches good attempt but uh, they try to make it look as upmarket as they could uh, so they have that some neural pattern um, aircon you know holders so when you just hold it you just feel oh they're more sophisticated now um, perforated leather over here it's, it's leather wrap but it's rather hard okay and now uh, you have cruise control all those are here powered uh, mirrors everything power windows all that these are expected right and uh, see this is what I meant by effort you look at the Fortuner right they also have this this guy also but I remember when I reviewed the Outlander I just felt that they could have done more with the interior anyway uh, there's some storage space down here as well which is really good a, a, a good touch a lot of cars they, they just they just forgotten all about this space but it's actually actually a very good place to put your smart tags and all that um, which which I, I, I really appreciate okay and then you have a little holder here uh, and then door bins okay 
even this one is not the pass-through type so you can drop things here you know the pass-through type is quite annoying right you just put something here and then just drop down there um, you don't get a space here but because they route the USB cables here and as I mentioned these are waterproof uh, covers somewhat waterproof lah, huh? but it, it really seals it up okay and then uh, this compartment I don't think you you ever get to use it in, in any reasonable way but it's, 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 it's a place where you can store your smartphone in at least all right uh, cup holders they didn't block the middle up so that's nice and uh, it's sort of like an elongated shape over there so it's more usable that means they fully use up this space okay which is good which is good okay um, open up here not no surprises you can cut some 3m mat inside so that it's covered at least but it's just a square space you get uh this which has always been there oh some nice badging here huh? i'm proud to be a muex anyway so yeah no surprises over here still as comfy as it was and then uh, you get all the uh, aircon vents up here all the way to the back there you can control it as well you get an lcd screen to watch your movies for your kids on long journeys and all that okay and then uh, you get a sunglass holder as well visor without mirror visor with mirror so uh yeah that's for mommy they presume okay you get a handle here and then another handle here so so yeah it's an off-road car and then you get a compartment over here okay and then this guy here looks uh the screen technology is not the, i mean the latest one and all that but at least right i mean yes the interface isn't as pretty as the one in the toyota but it's not as uh, crazy when it comes to controlling what you can or cannot do when you're driving which is which i find it annoying uh because if you limit me in doing whatever it is as my car is going right then why the hell i go and hook up my phone to the system right but this one i mean i can listen to my bluetooth music i can listen to it through usb ipod whatever it does everything okay and it's it's also touch screen and uh, you know they could have had a back button here but they, they put it here so it just adds some sophistication uh, a, a better integration because they have some customized button down here for short shortcut access so which is which i appreciate all right so yeah it looks more from the factory rather than you know going to brothers and order something and put it in like that uh, actually like all Toyota's now attach uh, push start weirdly the rear aircon button is here so remember uh, it's over here when you test drive the car you you wouldn't be able to find it over here so I guess they retrofitted it there because this came from the uh, D-Max and the Chevrolet Colorado okay so yeah that's the front let's go to the back Okay, it is super spacious behind here and uh, you can see me, right? Let me show you another thing. Sorry, I'm using my phone. And the seat can be reclined to crazy angles for the middle row. So it's, it's really like the lounging position. I think this is even, this reclines even more than the one in the Harrier. So I really like it because when you recline it to such an angle and then <laughs> and then you do that you see that <laughs> mm. for long journeys it, it's a leather frame car so you 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 just don't expect this you you'll be stupid if you expect a leather frame full off-road 4x4 car to have the right quality of a monocoque car uh, go Google around M O N O C O C O Q U E Monoco. All right, uh, the differences. Okay, Monoco cars they can uh, they're more comfortable, they're more quiet, but they just couldn't take the same beating as a leather frame car could. Okay, so yeah, take this as the equivalent uh, vehicle within the price range of a Honda Accord. But it does quite a bit more things than a, than a Honda Accord, all right? Or a Camry. Yeah. Now, let's get a few things 
out of wow they completely demolish the water park anyway let's get a few things out of uh, the equation first is this car as handsome as the Toyota Fortuner nope is this car's interior as beautiful as the Fortuner's nope is this car's interior actually in terms of space right it's, it more than matches up okay what what Isuzu has done is that because Toyota they have two variants of the Fortuner uh, a bit of a weird positioning I would say because they decided to have the diesel without anything and then they have for the high spec car they put the specs into the petrol so what you have is that you have the kind of car that needs a diesel engine but if you buy the diesel one you get a rather low spec car and then if you buy the petrol one you get the full spec but you get a petrol engine the 2.7 liter petrol four cylinder engine it has got to be the if i mean from my knowledge okay it has got to be the largest displacement four cylinder engine in the world i'm not sure if that is an accolade but it it, it sort of is okay and what Isuzu has done looking at their only competitor because Mitsubishi just somehow decided to let go of this segment and Ford brought in the uh, what is it even called Everest Everest yeah Ford brought in the Everest but uh, the prices just went crazy it went 240,000 or whatever uh, which is supposed to be the kind of price for all these pickups and all that but just because uh, Malaysia's pickup trucks are tax-free we have a very wrong perception on pickup prices the prices of pickup trucks we have a totally wrong perception uh, anyway so what Isuzu has done is that now uh, you have this one spec and it's fully loaded okay it has an infotainment system that works rather well even though the screen is sort of TFT uh, old technology screen but uh, not, a, not a wide viewing angle but it sort of matches the others in this segment but uh, to me at least I get to do things at least I get to operate certain stuff while I'm driving so oh, wait sorry so you have the steering wheel control buttons for um, where is the oh that's the cruise control so you have cruise control for highway driving you have the steering volume and all that you have the uh, four-wheel drive system that you can turn with a dial two-wheel drive which is rear wheel four-wheel high and four four-wheel low you can do all that and it is a uh, 4x4 with proper off-road capabilities and sorry I saw low curbs and I just thought hey I can U-turn anywhere I like I guess that's how it is oh speed bump what what speed bump what I don't see speed bumps okay I'm gonna turn into there just to get boti a bit so now that's what I mean uh, with cars like these you just you can explore places that you're like hmm what is this I wonder and then you just turn in so you can do that all right uh, are they handsome no these kind of cars were never handsome uh, but it's it's very 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 family looking let's just turn in here you see that's what I mean oh you can never enter here with regular cars but there I am and tighter the roads this is a bit scary actually because uh, I'm not sure if I'll get stuck but if I ever get stuck be sure that 
this is wow fuck me someone's oh shit man this is real okay. <laughs> what are you serious this is like oh. I just couldn't believe it. Tree, 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 tree. Uh, what is over there? Let's have a look. Ooh, I shouldn't go too near, I guess. Do I get stuck? Uh, is there something? I don't think I'll drop into a hole. Since I got reverse camera, right? Too cold. Ooh. <laughs> oh! Fuck me, that's the Clang River. Damn, man. Whoa! Okay. Sounded like I'm killing somebody. All right, I'm out. So yeah, you can go wherever you like with cars like that. Just rummage through things. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm on full time four wheel, which is not a very fuel efficient way of configuring the drivetrain but immediately I can feel more assuring in terms of how the torque is being delivered because uh, before this the torque only delivers to the back so you feel the back like Ooh. but if you put it into four wheel it's perfectly all right but you're gonna consume more fuel because the drivetrain is gonna be there will be more things draining the drivetrain than this. So, yeah, the Mu X is compared to the Fortuner. Okay, the Fortuner is handsomer. It is more expensive, yes, because it's handsomer, and it corners really well. The Fortuner actually handles well for a car like that, but the Fortuner is not as comfortable as the Mu X. Okay, the Mu X is more comfy, definitely. It is cheaper to buy. It actually has the correct drivetrain, which is uh, the diesel. And one more thing that uh, if you buy the high spec Fortuner, you will not match this car on one thing, which is fuel consumption. Because um, you can ask anybody that owns a D Max or a Mu X, Isuzu's diesel engine is. They might not be the most powerful, but they are freaking 
fuel efficient when it comes to consumption they are freaking freaking fuel efficient so that has always been an isuzu hallmark and if you have the 2.7 petrol fortunate good luck you're gonna refill more often than you should be doing uh, that's isuzu's proposition because um that's what they realized that's what they have uh <laughs> the four-wheel drive uh, yeah okay okay now for the other thing that i want to talk about speed bombs bye <laughs> Yeah, if you are the sort of guy who who just wants a car that can bring your family around, super reliable, super fuel efficient, and do anything, fetch anyone, fetch anything, go anywhere, this is it. These kind of cars, they make a lot of sense. Uh, be it the Muex or the Fortuner and uh, they are not super expensive I mean the expensive one is the Ford Everest but they all do the same thing okay you just drive normally like that I mean it's really not for those who are in their 20s they want a flashy car nah it's really for the family man uh, the family guy who just wants a big car that can do basically everything uh, you can't go ulu yam curvy driving with all these I mean uh, yeah that's that's how it is oh bluetooth who's that I wonder yeah so yeah I will conclude this car as sort of a pair of Timberlands because you just can go anywhere do anything with it I mean you can't you can't run with it, obviously. You don't bring this car to a windy road and expect you get enjoyment out of it. But you can go... I mean, trekking, you can go to the rivers, you can... It's waterproof. The pair of Timberland is slight, is more expensive than your usual shoe, right? You buy a pair of sneakers, I mean, Adidas and all that, it's going to be 400 ringgit. Some are 500 basketball shoes are I mean Nikes and all that they're mostly 500 600 ringgit and a pair of Timberlands are say 800 ringgit right but they justify their price because there's more material in it there's more things with it it is durable it is super super duper durable yeah that's what a pair of Timberlands are this is the kind of car okay is it comfortable to wear a pair of Timberlands uh, not not exactly because they are heavy they are chunky um, that's how it is some people like that and I do have a pair as well because sometimes I do that but I only have two parking so I, I, I can't uh, it would be awesome if I can carry my family and go anywhere do anything you know uh, especially river wading i really like it i enjoyed it actually and uh some mild off-roading or, or uh, not the extreme ones extremes i mean i need to change the tires and uh, i don't mean borneo safari extreme but you can have fun with this car just other fun i mean you can drive down to podixon and then you saw an empty patch of beach just drive straight in you can um yeah most cars couldn't all right, that's about it.